Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Let me now introduce our next speaker, uh, Tom Patterson. Uh, Tom Patterson is a Managing Director for Emerging Technologies uh, Security at Accenture, where he drives uh, advancement in artificial intelligence, quantum security, and space-based security around the globe. His expertise in security stems from three decades of experience across all facets of security. For instance, advising the FBI, Secret Service, and the White House on security issues. Uh, today, he will talk about moving towards a quantum uh, security maturity index. Thank Please you very much. Welcome, uh, Tom, to the stage. Always fun to follow Dustin. Um, there will not be a math test at the end of my talk, uh, but it is really nice to be here at uh, this particular group. Uh, listening to many of the sessions so far, I realized this is a very tuned in group. Uh, that have thought about this a lot. The majority of the world that, that run the businesses, run the governments of the world, are not as far along as many of you are when you start to think about post-quantum security and what you should be doing. So to that end, uh, we've put together a program called the Quantum Security Maturity Index uh, that we're going around, I'm spending a lot of time um, going around the world trying to expose this concept to people because I think it helps solve a problem where we are now, at the very early stages of a multi-decade long process. Uh, it's important for the people to know. And, and you know, you've heard a lot of these talks. Many of them have the same message, which is start now. You know, and in every one of these meetings, it's, it's like, okay, it's really complicated, really complicated, really complicated, start now. Okay, that's good. But then they come back and, well, well what should we do? And wh what does that really mean? So we put together a program at Accenture. We work with uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, security provider in the world. And so we've adopted this. We've, we've been working with post-quantum security in our labs uh, for about seven years. And we have a lot of, of different kinds of clients around the world, whether they're banking or governments or manufacturing or space. There's a lot of, of parts of the world that really are interested in knowing what to do and getting started. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit, not about what you've heard all day and what, you've already, what you already know, but I'm going to talk to you about this, mostly this program that we have around the Maturity Index. But let's just level set and get going. So, you know, from a board perspective, a member of a board of directors around the world, they look at this headline that's going to be coming at some point in their careers in the front of the Wall Street Journal or the FT that says, adversary country X can break your encryption, therefore you're out of luck. Shut it down. So that's what they're calling Q Day. And then they turn around and they ask their CEO, who asked their CIO, who asked their CISO, what are we doing about it? And it's the same questions over and over again. Is it real? Is it sci-fi? Does it really matter? How much will it cost? When can we have the answer? Who do we buy the gizmo from to, to protect us? Same questions. You know, smart people all over the world. Um, but they do get the fact that this is a thing now. Uh, what we try and talk to them about is what you guys know, is it's just math. You know, the way we do public key encryption, and I see a few gray beards, not, not as many, but a few gray beards have been around for a long time. You know, I remember when PKI came out and we were gonna bring it in and it was, it was transformational. This concept of a public shared key was gonna be able to do it. And people made up giant numbers that'll last a trillion years or a billion years or something. But the one that was most commonly used was this encryption scheme will last a thousand lifetimes. And so I can't tell you when Q Day is going to come. None of, nobody can reliably. But I can tell you we measure that now in years, not thousands of lifetimes. So we know that what we thought earlier in our careers is now completely out the window, and there's this compression. And so the start now, we feel, is really real, and it's also not so scary. So here's how we look at it in terms of the messaging that we give to our clients around the world. 
First, we tell them you know, how, to, how to pronounce cubit. It's not quibit, uh, but uh, they, they do have to sort of get their heads around it. They very rarely understand it. They just have to do what, what when I, was, I got into this in 2015, and I fought it for two years, the, the quantum information science aspects of this. Two years, like, there's no way, it can't. Superposition can't work, entanglement can't work. There's just, I just fought it and fought it and fought it. And then a professor from Rand Corporation, one of our great think tanks in the world, grabbed me by the lapels and shook me and says, Tom, you don't have to understand how it works. You just have to believe that I understand how it works. And after I got past that block, I sort of started to, to understand it and, and get used to it. When you have a big enough quantum computer, it can do the factoring. So you have a big shared prime number like 15. It can tell you that the two prime numbers that were multiplied are three and a five. Okay, we, that's what was supposed to take a thousand lifetimes. Now we know it can be done um, not, you know, quickly. To, to sort of see how we're progressing and where we are in the world, we're starting to count, we're telling them, watch the press releases, watch the, st the stories around the number of qubits. Started from when I got involved in this, it was a concept, then it got to two qubits, and then you know, a 10 qubit machine, we were measuring in tens, and then hundreds. Uh, Atom Computers just put out one that had 1,000 uh, qubits uh, just this past year. So one of the factors to look at is the number of qubits. And of course, you guys probably know when it gets to 4,099, that's like the magic number that can run shores. But then there's also this noise. And so we also tell people to watch the noise reduction. There's a whole separate set of science to bring down the noise in a quantum computer. So you don't need 1,000 times the number of qubits in order to do a process. You can do it much more quickly. So there's noise reduction is happening. Then there's the event horizon that's compressing. So steal now, decrypt later uh, is this concept. We now have real clients around the world, some governments, some private sector companies that are watching their public key encrypted data be stolen by an adversary. And they've seen it. They, so they know the only reason is it's being harvested and being stored for later. And they want to fix for that today. They want to do something about that particular problem today. And then every three or four months, you'll see another report from some sort of a hybrid solution that uses a, a, a currently available quantum computer and a massively parallel classical set of computers to try and still become cryptographically relevant. So those are being built, and we can see them from satellite reconnaissance, see them popping up in different parts in the, of the world. Maybe they're still mining Bitcoin, but maybe they are also there to have these hybrid attacks. So those are the different factors that the companies of the world are looking at when they try and figure out what a quantum security program means to them. Should they be worried, and what, they, what should they do about it? Our message is still the same, which is start now. But if you prepare now, then you can relax a lot later. And I heard one of the, the good questions that came up of, you know, what if these lattice-based algorithms get broken by tomorrow's, you know, brilliant mathematician? It could happen, uh, but there's still ways to go and, and uh, things that companies are trying to do now in order to address that. Some of the questions that come up, you know, what sectors? You know, we talk about banking, because banking's always first. Whenever you introduce security into anything, banking sector is the first one to buy it, the first one to deploy it. You know, it's where the money is, which is you know, why people rob banks. Uh, but now we're seeing a lot more transportation uh, uh, sectors, manufacturing sectors, communication sectors. There's a lot of sectors that rely on public key information uh, to be shared. Um, but everybody wants to know what their peers are doing. So there's this, a lot of questions of, well, okay, we, wanna, we don't want to go too fast, you know, but we want to go like just as fast as, as our peers are doing. Um, there's not much regulatory guidance yet, and a lot of security people are sort of used to, they're conditioned to put in just enough security to pass the regulations, and that's what they do. And in this case, the threat and the technology evolution is happening faster than the regulations are, are coming, so we need a different set of, of rules for adoption. And then because we're here at the PKI conference, we sort of really want to talk a little bit about the role of PKI. Just put some of the, uh, the guidance up there. Uh, they're all over, pretty much every country has this, got the, 
the, the Dutch guidance here is a great, uh, great handbook. I think that they went into more detail here. Uh, but pretty much every, every country now has their own, same guidance, which says for our government-owned national security type data, we need, to, we need to protect that now. We need to get started today. And if you're in the critical infrastructure space in, in your country, we, we strongly recommend that you get started now. And that's what everybody's talking about. I just left yesterday the Financial Services ISAC uh, meeting down um, just down the couple canals over, uh, where they put out in March uh, this document that says, um, the conclusion of the document is we cannot afford to wait. Essentially, their way of saying get started now. Everybody is, is, is focused on this. And what we see is that every big organization is going to go through these steps over the rest of this decade at some point. Maybe they'll wait until that headline happens in the FT, but maybe they'll be a little bit proactive and they'll, they'll try and prepare in advance. But we see these steps being taken. We don't, we don't have any um, companies, clients that are all the way through to the eighth step, uh, but we do have one that's now to the seventh step. Most of them are in the first, the lower, lower parts of these stairs, but they start with a strategy. They have to do a quantum risk analysis to sort of see what are we protecting with PKI today that might be vulnerable if an adversary could crack that. Then do the discovery phase. Most organizations don't know where all their at-risk algorithms are. And so going through, and there's, there's now tools out there to, in a very efficient way, go out and discover where that is. Then you come to something the PKI world knows really well, the ecosystem. So you look at the ecosystem. You know, well, Gone are the days when your company was a castle and you had your moat and, and you were safe. Now everything's interconnected with the cloud and SaaS and everything else. There's so many interconnections there. Everyone has to work together collectively or it fails. You know, no better ex example of that than the, the payments uh, sector that uh, we just heard someone talking about. So understanding what your ecosystem is doing. You know, we like this lattice algorithm. Oh, we like QKD or well, we like this. You know, making sure that you understand what's going on uh, throughout that. Then you need to pick your architecture. And it's not so simple. It depends on what sector you're in. It depends on what country you're in. It depends on what kind of a, of a risk profile and a technology profile your organization is. You know, we have clients now, big organizations now, that are saying, we're not going to do any classical defense. We're going to do a quantum information science defense. We're going to do quantum key distribution and, that, and symmetric key algorithms. And that's, how, that's all we're going to do. And we realize that the math isn't there yet and all the pieces aren't there yet, but that's what we're going to go. And that's fine. But, but if you're going to work with other people, you want to make sure that that ecosystem is set. So figuring out what your architecture is, then figuring out how to test it. We ended up building a big quantum test environment so that we can simulate each of our clients' um, infrastructures and then bring in the, you know, the different HSMs and bring in, put up the different algorithms and just sort of see what works together. Turns out a lot of, a lot of the hype uh, doesn't work, isn't trustworthy. A lot of the instances, you know, well-meaning instances of, you know, we've coded up, uh, you know, our version of Kyber and somebody else has coded up their version of Kyber, but they don't work together in, in real world. So we see a lot of these efforts going on uh, well before the trials. What we're trying to do is come up with a organized way so that organizations, leaders around the world can look and say, where are we? How mature are we? Are we at, at level zero? Are we at level eight? Are we at level two? And who, you know, who knows about CMMI, works with CMMI? Um, you know, CMMI, I thought, was great. It was a way that board of, boards of directors, board members, could look at uh, uh, security, which they generally don't understand, and say, oh, we're at CMMI level two. Our peers and, and, and advisors say we should be at level three. If, you know, if we give you $5 million in two years, can you get us to CMMI level three? They don't know what it means. They just know that that's what they want. So I'm trying to, to sort of drive the process so that there's a set of standardized definitions about adoption and maturity as we go through. Because PKI is so robust in, in its current state, um, you can't just tinker with it. And this is where you guys know 
know this, but this is how we talk to clients. You know, we talk about how it is highly sophisticated and highly integral to their operations today. And just changing over you know, from one HSM to another, or from one piece to another, one certificate to another certificate, that's not the answer. That's not how, it ha how it's going to work. So bringing this together with you know, different cert you know, changes in certificates, I've stolen the, uh, the, the, the interest slide that I like. I've been an interest uh, customer since the early 1990s. Um, so bigoted towards that. But we talk about things um, like um, the uh, key encapsulation, and we talk about things like TLS that need to happen in order to bring all this together in an organized way throughout, the, throughout an entire ecosystem. Now, TLS 1.3 sounds really good, uh, but TLS 1.3 isn't in almost anything that you want it to be in. Uh, it's not reliable. It's not, it's not in, um, in the browsers. And so there's a process that's going to take place over many years going forward. But if you can come up with a maturity index and share information, you start to improve the overall quantum defenses of the world, the civilized world, not just your company and your sector, but the whole economy that you're part of. Um, you know, they say if you, if you can measure it, you can, uh, if you can't measure it, you can't, uh, can't protect it. Being able to measure the progress and being able to uh, get more budget approved for it sharing knowledge about how you're doing these things. These are all really important components of any solution. And this is what uh, we've been working with the, the banks of the world, the uh, financial industry uh, around the world, to come to an agreement. Almost every bank in the world has an active program. You go back to that stair step in your mind, they're already through the first couple steps along that path. Uh, they may not have chosen which algorithms they're going to use. They may not have chosen which architecture they're going to go with. But they are working down that path today. And I ran a, a workshop there back in March in, in their Denver meeting. And I had CISOs from 12 banks um, come together. And I said, just, just as, a, as a show of hands, using Chatham House rules, you know, raise your hand if, if you are you know, all the way, if you have a, an active program for quantum security. And every hand went up. And it was surprising, because they all looked at each other and said, oh, I didn't know you were doing it. I didn't know you were doing it. it. It was all sort of very haphazard. I downloaded this. I tried to put in this algorithm. It wasn't structured, but they, they just, in that point, saw the benefits of sharing. And that's where the, the concept of the maturity index really started. So what we're trying to do, the reason I came here for you guys, is I'm looking for volunteers. I'm looking for groups or companies or smart people that want to pitch in and help define what those five or eight or ten you know, pieces of, of those stair steps should be in terms of a global, not a standard, because we're not NIST, uh, but a, in terms of a globally accepted uh, way to look at and then budget for uh, your, your quantum security program. And so each, this, is the ones, this is the ones that we take our clients through at Accenture. You know, IBM has a similar path, but they have 10 pieces. You know, other another big company we work with has five pieces. You know, it doesn't really matter to me where we end up putting it. All these steps are going to end up having to be done at some point. But I want to get a grouping. And what we're, we don't have here really blown out is the PKI components. So I was really happy to be invited up here by uh, the, the PKI group in order to come and, and sort of expose this to you all ask for volunteers, ask for people that, uh, that will get involved with us as we go forward. The, you know, we have the banks now, and we have a couple of big telecoms uh, that are going to sign up to it. We have many of the largest manufacturers in the world. You know, think where you buy your encryption today. Uh, many of them are, are already thrown in with it. And we're planning to unveil this to the world in January at the World Economic Forum. So we have a, uh, a, a couple of, of workshops set up uh, there on the main stage uh, to talk about this to the kings and the presidents and the CEOs of the world to, to get a, a generalized uh, uh, nodding up and down and saying, yes, this is something that we want to do, and let's get started and, and start talking about whether it's we're at level zero or level one or level two and where we want to get. So. If I can get a, just sort of a non-binding, 
I don't know if this is Chatham, is this Chatham House rules or what is it? Or is this being broadcast all over the world? Okay, Complete, completely non-binding. You're not on camera anyway. Um, would your organization support having there having a uh, an index that you could talk to to say, hey, we're we're at level zero. We want to get to level one. So because that's what our peers do. Can I see it? Show anybody brave enough to put up hands, and then leave your leave your hand or put your hand back up if you'd be willing or interested in working uh, together collectively towards that goal. Okay, nice, very nice. Um, we are. Uh, Love, uh, my, the last slide has my, uh, my email address on it. But we would love to add in um, some smart PKI interested folks into this mix. Um, and then you know, it, at uh, the World Economic Forum in Davos, we, we are going to have a number of uh, we have the plenary sessions, but we're also going to have a number of working sessions down on the promenade uh, throughout the week to, to sort of get a lot of, of uh, groundswell get in going. The product vendors are all going to be part of this. So if you if you work with you know, product vendor A or B or C, uh, they're all uh, invited to participate. Uh, I think we have uh, a already a critical mass uh, so that uh, it'll be easy to, to join in. There's nothing punitive about any of this. This is all just a way to share information, to get people working together. Um, I believe it will help with governance. I think it will help with budgets. I think it will help with guidance, timing, I think we'll collectively move forward towards that quantum security that we want to have. We all want to have this you know, before we need it. We want to be able to prepare now and relax later. Um, and I think the answer is there. Um, you know, again, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what our adversaries uh, are doing you know, specifically. I know they probably won't put out a press release the moment they crack you know, create a cryptographically relevant quantum computer. They will probably just use it. And I do know that we have a number of clients now that uh, we, have, we have two that we're planning for QKD, which is a longer lead time effort, that suddenly said, oh, we're seeing this theft right now. We're seeing the steal now, the uh, decrypt later thefts right now. So we need to move. So we know that this is a real thing. I want to see a global adoption. Um, I want to see everybody part of these new standards. Um, I was around from, from DES to triple DES to you know, AES. I know how long that took. You know, uh, optimistically, I say, hey, we're much smarter now. You know, we've got more tools now. We'll, we should be able to move to this next set of algorithms faster. But we're, it's so diverse and it's so interconnected. Uh, who knows? Uh, but I do know that we need to start now. So I thank you for your time and, and happy to take any questions. But definitely, please don't leave here. If you have an interest in being involved, we want you involved. And, and I'll, I'll be your point person to get you hooked up with the team. And my email's up there. Thank you very much. Save some time for questions. Do we have any questions? Yes, there was already one question from uh, our uh, online uh, audience. Okay. Um, could you elaborate a bit more on the tools that your clients are using uh, in the asset uh, and inventory uh, uh, management and discovery? Yeah, so um, I guess maybe I should be hesitant to, to pick a favorite or anything, but there are, are tools in different categories. So we have a group of, of clients that say, we already have scanning tools. We don't need to buy anything else. So they use their basic you know, Tanium or whatever they, they currently have, and they scan their networks. That generally finds about 50% of all the, uh, the crypto that's, that's relevant in this case. And then they come back and they go, OK, well, maybe do you have a tool for, for this or that? So the second uh, category are specialized scanning tools that are, are go through, specifically look for these ones that are at risk. Uh, they can find a lot of the rest but they don't do a great job at the post-processing. They don't put it all together, so you tend to get reams of reports that are difficult and time-consuming to deal with. The third area that we like the best um, has the full amount of scanning capability, but it has artificial intelligence back-end post-processing. So once you've done our stage one, include, our strategy always includes a quantum risk analysis to go on top of your existing risk analysis. That gets fed into the AI so that when it finds a, a, some algorithms that are over here that, that are at risk, it looks at what they're being used for in the network and gives you a much more actionable plan. 
So that's sort of the, the crown jewel of, of the technology that's out there, and there's, there's several companies that, that do that. So those are the three categories of scanning tools that, uh, that our clients are using today. Okay, thank you. So there's already quite a fairly advanced uh, scanning tools available. Uh. There are. So if you go back to, to this, so um, there, are, there are at least a dozen companies that make scanning tools specifically for quantum, uh, quantum encryption uh, detection. Uh, for the architecture, uh, there's um, two different classes of, of companies that have popped up. There's the ones that are, are focused on orchestrated crypto agility. That's the concept of being able to, to answer the other guy's question earlier. You know, what if Lattice gets, gets broken? You know, crypto agility is the ability to rotate your algorithms. It's kind of like we rotate our keys today. So you can put that in now with, with some degree of assurance that even if something new comes along later, you don't have to blow everything back up in your, your infrastructure again. It'll just adapt to that. And then there's the QKD vendors that are out there that are making a lot of really cool tools. They're all trying to be like the Cisco of quantum uh, and, and making a lot of, of, of new tools. And there's dozens of companies popping up. Very few of these companies are more than five years old in, in either category, but they're really fun to watch and work with. And you know, we've brought everything into our lab so we get to play with, with all of them uh, on behalf of our clients. But uh, it's something that you, you can just spend and get engrossed in and spend your entire career uh, just focused on this and watching because we are at the ground floor. This is a, a decade plus long transition uh, plan and it's really important. It's not science fiction. It's not scary, you know, what did uh, Einstein called it? Spooky back in the 60s, and so everyone said, well, if Einstein can't figure it out, then, then what, what chance do I have? But in reality, it is just math. We know how to work with it. It's a new kind of an algorithm. We need to make changes. We've done all this before. We need to do it again, and we need to start now. Thank you very much. Okay. It, maybe there's still a question from the uh. audience. Otherwise, I see there's one question from our online audience. So did I understand you uh, correctly that you recommended two or more tools? I guess this is still about the scanning tools. Yeah, I, when I'm not on camera, someone wants to send me an email, I'll, I'm happy yeah. to discuss tool selection. Okay, then uh, you're uh, free yeah, to Tom, reach out Tom. to Tom. Patterson Tom Patterson at Accenture.com. Please <laughs> uh, join me in thanking uh, Tom again. And thank you all. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.